Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to learn about how to make this kind of abstract bubble animation. Okay, so here you can see I have a rock model over here, but I downloaded this from Mega Scan. But what you can do is just click on this store button and type rock over here. You're gonna find all of this models of rock so you can use this for your version now i'm gonna do just click on this thing just right click on this thing and i can see this simulation tag and click on this clot tag so when now i'm playing this video you can see my rock is falling down it is happening because we have the gravity also but we don't want that in this scenario right now so what you can do is just press ctrl D from your keyboard just press ctrl D from your keyboard and you can see the gravity is there you can just go to simulation scene and you can see this gravity which is minus 981 just type 0 over there and now if I play it again nothing is happening my rock is in the same position I have put in it okay then I want a little more extra animation on this so what I can do is I'm gonna just go this simulate on this op on this simulate button and click on this forces and then at not attractor but turbulence yeah here it is turbulence and now if I play you can see a little bit motion happening here but I want a little more strength on this so I'm just gonna edit this value of this turbulence little like maybe 15 and 15 the scale and the strength both now if I play you can see this is deforming on the same space but right now you can see it's ending very soon because our frame range is 0 to 90 let's do it around 0 to 300 at least so we get a little longer version of this so when if I play this you can see it continues playing now i want to attach a boiling sphere kind of thing so whenever this object is moving they are moving with this or at the same time so for that what we can do is attach a scatters of sphere on top of this so for that just click on this octane go to live viewer and again you will see this object thing click on this octane scatter now you will see there is something new layer came up which is called octane scatter now i want to scatter things on top of this thing okay so i'm just gonna click on octane scatter here you can see where i have to put my this mesh into this so you can see these green lines basically this scattering on top of the vertex of that mesh but i don't want to be on the vertex so what you can do just instead of vertex just click on this surface okay as you can see there are random variation of this and the count value is 1000 means i can add you can increase the count as well but that will be too much so 1000 is enough as of now and then i'm just gonna click on this cube you can see this icon just click hold click on this and you will see this sphere object so take this sphere object put inside of game scatter like you see i have put in this sphere not below the scatter but inside the scatter now right now still you see the lines only but what if i want to display on my viewport whatever the shape inside my optin scatter i want to see see that particular thing on my viewport so what you can do just click on this display tag here you can see lines instead of lines just take sphere so you can see this sphere and you can see also that every sphere is on the same size but we don't want that we want randomness like some smaller sphere some bigger sphere like that so for that you can do click on them scatter again go to distribution and here you can see this scale icon just click on it and on the shader i'm gonna choose this noise so if i 
take this noise you can see my spheres has very random value but also right now the sphere is little big so what you can do just click on the sphere and just keep turning down the radius so you can see this is also a thing yeah this much is fine for my side so like if i play right now you can see there are so many boiling bubbles i can decrease the count as well i think it's little too much so i can go to octane scatter again and just decrease the count a bit something like 300 maybe yeah 300 is good number and you can see i have this thing over here now if you want to take a very beautiful close up shot you can just go here and you know render this out i will definitely gonna tell you how to render this okay so our next task is to light this whole scene and render it out so for that we are gonna use octane render i'm just again gonna click on octane and live viewer it's in already there open up like this i'm just gonna start my octane render and i'm gonna just click on this thing and put it my viewport so i've customized my thing here you can see the result also now let's uh, fix the resolution first so right now i'm just gonna click on render setting i'm gonna take we're gonna make it into a real kind of format so i'm gonna pick 1080 by 1920 and if you click on this lock button over here it automatically gonna come up into a real format okay now i'm gonna take a camera from here and i'm going inside the camera by clicking on this icon and again if i'm click on octane camera i can fix the focal length as well i'm picking 80 mm as of now and just moving my camera a little closer some kind of angle like this that is much is fine yeah so i turn on my octane render i fixed my camera now we have to change this direct lighting into a part tracing and click on the setting just type 1000 and the global illumination is 10 over here now as you can see everything is white right now so i'm gonna light this thing from a very dark point so just take the hdri environment over here now you can see everything is black now but i want some gray kind of background so for that i'm again gonna pick this hdri environment so right now if you click on this icon you can see this is my primary environment so primary environment is gonna affect my scene okay but the second octane sky i took and i'm clicking on this i am gonna pick from primary to visible environment now what visible environment do is it's only visible in the scene but that specific light is not affecting your object so right now if i'm even if i'm click on this like go to color channel see i picked a white color over here okay but still nothing is brightening up my objects in my scene but if i just change from physical to primary you can see it's that white light is affecting my objects as well so i'm just gonna keep visible environment for now and change the color to something gray okay now i need to uh, add two three area lights on the scene so for that i'll do one, one thing is just go to this obtain area light i took this light i'm going off from my camera because I don't want to change anything from the camera that is why I am going off from my camera into my fully viewport and just shifting my light here and there to get some good looking angle yeah, 
this is fine now I'm again gonna take another area light and I'm gonna put this from the right side so as you can see nothing is happening just refresh your octane yeah now if I go again back to my camera you can see I have, have lit up my scene but it's too much overexposed because right now our default value is 100 I'm gonna dim down my left a bit and click on my right light and I'm gonna dim again a little bit so for example this much is yeah it's good to go now we have created this now you can see there are many things happening like this kind of distortion it's because our poly count of the sphere is very less as of now so just go to octane scatter the sphere you can increase the segment of this i have increased it around like 60 yeah 60 is good so you can see there's no polygon things happening so this is like good now we have to create a material for this thing so for that just click on material click on this specular material i'm gonna tell you why i'm choosing this because we are going to make a sss material which a subsurface scattering material and put this thing on like this octane scatter so everything now if i refresh it everything you can see is over here is some glass kind of texture you can see and i'm gonna put this thing on my mesh as well the rock mesh now you can see everything is glass but it's black because it's our, our environment is black right now okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just double click on this thing and i'm gonna open the node editor this is very new for you i know but it's very simple as well just click on this you will see so many things first thing we have to do is click on this roughness thing here roughness and you can increase the float value so you can see this glass material is little rough right now now go to medium click on this absorption and scattering now I have to attach a RGB colors to give this a color so for that from your keyboard if you type shift C or maybe you can just go over here when you hover over your mouse this window automatically gonna pop up you can just search here as well you gonna find the RGB color thing node but for now I'm just gonna type shift C and type directly RGB spectrums you can see here just click on this double click and this node gonna open now what you have to do is just click on this dot connect to this absorption and I'm gonna copy this thing so what you can do just control C control V another window gonna come up and just attach this to a scattering window okay so yeah you can see everything is little little white now but I want to change the color so just click on this RGB spectrum go on this color icon you can pick any color you want I'm gonna pick something like this orangish and right now it's a very dense thing if you can see I want to be little lighter in way so just click on the scattering medium and you see the density is 100 just lower the density something like maybe 11 yeah 11 is good now if you see everything is so, so dark and dirty so just increase the strength of your light little by little okay so this is looking a little nice and one more thing you can do is click on your material go to this common thing and just check these two things fake shadow and affect alpha thing so you see everything is much more brighter 
now i'm again gonna dim down my lights because it's burning 23 okay this much is fine i'm gonna add i'm gonna just tweak my light positions a bit yeah this much is fine i think and yep as you can see this is bright i'm again gonna tweak my this white value into something yeah something like this this color is fine yeah so yeah you can see we already achieved the same look as i showed you in the video and if i just you know play from here on my timeline it's automatically moving as well Okay, so now it's time to render this thing for our final output so what you can do is if you want to render from 0 to 300 frames just click on this this thing edit render setting and this pop-up will gonna come up here you can select octane render then our resolution is good 1080 by 920 now here you can see current frame is 300 300 because if you just render this out only one frame gonna render but we want to render the whole sequence so just click on this thing and choose all frame so it's from 0 to 300 it gonna automatically pick up now click on this save thing the format we gonna choose is mp4 if you want to save into a png format you can do that for later editing as well but right now you can just simply select png and give the path where you want to save it so you can save it over here and when you will automatically gonna derive the directory just close this thing and you see here a middle icon just click on that and it gonna ask you something and just press yes and our rendering started so right now it's taking around like maybe three minutes something to render one frame so you can then leave it to your renders thing 